You know what your love language is. I hope you're practicing learning to love the person that you're with the way they desire to be loved mm -hmm. and not just loving them the way you want to be loved mm -hmm. because that could cause additional conflict within the relationship. So we implore you to take that home at your leisure and when you have the opportunity, do the test. Find out. It may not be 100% accurate, but it will be close and you'll be able to then discuss that and realize, you know, wow, I've been loving you the wrong way. Now I can practice loving you the way you desire to be loved. Is that all right? Amen. Good. You don't have intimacy if you don't really know your spouse's love language. Amen. I do want to say that again. You do not know about intimacy until you really learn your spouse's love language. Because for a long time, I was loving my wife the wrong way. We both do have the same uh, love language, which our love language are quality time. We like to spend quality time together. That's one of our love languages and acts of services. That can get you in trouble because you have to channel it to the right person. Amen. You can't have active services outside your home. Too much is not good for you. That's detrimental to your life and your home to your spouse. So once I learned about the love languages, I was able to do better with my marriage. Amen. The touchy, I'm, I'm a touchy, touchy feeling. I'm Hispanic. My wife is African American. Two different cultures. I had to learn different things. She had to learn different things because when we love hard, we fall hard very emotional and things like that. So I had to rearrange that for my wife because I couldn't show her that side right off the bat because that's a, a sign of weakness and things like that. So you don't want to be too emotional, but you want to be sensitive to your spouse. Yeah. Amen. You want to have an understanding. You want to learn. Invest. That was another thing I wanted to say that Pastor said. You have to invest. Just like you go to the doctors and God gave me this and um, and, uh, what was that? The, um, the trip. Hmm? No, no. Um, not Haiti. Oh, Jamaica. Jamaica. When we were speaking in Jamaica, and God spoke to me and said, just like you go to the doctors, and you go, the doctors don't know what's wrong with you. You go to the doctors, they ask you what's wrong with you. <laughs> so physically, you do feel something is wrong. Yeah. But spiritually, you don't know what's wrong. So you, don't, you do go to your Heavenly Father to see what the problem is because He was the one who made us. Amen. He made us. So invest in your marriage. You pay a copay to your doctor. Go to a counselor. I know that, that that's, that's not a good word for a lot of people. Mentoring is a better word because we all need help. So you pay a $35 copay to a mentor or to a person who's counseling you. That's worth it. That's worth it because they get together with you and spiritually they find out what is it that's missing, what's needed in your marriage. The prescription is the word of God. Amen. That's the prescription that you get. Yes, yes. So invest in your marriage. This is another investment of $70 mm -hmm. yes. in your marriage. Yes. Conference are more like surgery. God gave me this yesterday mm -hmm. while we were praying together. Yeah. God said the conference is deeper because they cut yeah. and they go in. Yes. And in conference, that's what we do. We, we spend time together, yes. three, four hours yes. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're able to go in. And at the end, what happens? The answers and the questions. And you know, that's when, that, that's when they, they actually cleaning up the wound, right. yeah. cleaning up the, you know, on, whatever yeah. mess that's around there. Yeah. Yeah. And then people are starting to talk a little more, more uh, be, be more freely with themselves. And, and really get the help that they need. And then the prescriptions again is when you go home and you say, okay, pray five times a day. <laughs> pray with your wife. Go to church every Wednesday, every Sunday. Whatever the requirements is to get better, that's, right. that's what you do. Amen. Y'all receive that? Yeah. 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 Wow. So intimacy, here we go, is closeness with one another. Mm -hmm. It's like the intimacy that develops between friends as you tell one another your life stories and all your secrets, your dreams, and your future. 
Remember we talked about that vision board? You absolutely should have a vision board for your marriage. We're going to do that this summer. So look out and talk to the clerks. They'll know about that coming up. But vision board is very important. We did it last year, and I promise you, just about everything that my husband put together because he did the vision board I was facilitating. God began to manifest within weeks. Not months, not years. I promise you, within weeks, because the word of God says, write the vision yeah. and make it yeah. plain. Right. So as soon as we did that, it began to manifest. Our desires, we put it on the paper, and then it just began to come, to pass. So I promise you, it does work. If it's in the word, then it'll work for you. So trust me. The noun, we're going to talk about definition. Intimacy comes from the Latin word intimari, which means impress or make familiar, which comes from Latin intimus, meaning in most. Intimacy is a close, family-like connection, you know? There is another kind of intimacy, which is that physical intimacy we talked about earlier, and that comes from having sexual relation, which one hopes that it would foster a kind of close relationship, right? And it's an act, especially one of the sexual kind. So a close, familiar relationship usually is one that is affectionate and loving, personal with one another and your family. It's a private, cozy atmosphere. Let's get intimate. Let's create the atmosphere mm -hmm. like the Clarks did for us today with these beautiful array of flowers on the tables and things of that nature. You just create the atmosphere for that individual or that person. An intimate act, especially one of sexual relations. And you know, I want to say it is hard at times to pray.